All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, here with Bad Omens, here with Noah and Nick. Guys, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Great. How yeah. are you? Got an early start today. Me and uh, our photographer, Brian, like got up early to go to the gym to be back in time for this. <laughs> and then we like got back and the link wasn't ready. And we were like, oh, my God, we rushed for no reason. <laughs> um, yeah, if you hear an echo, by the way, I'm sorry. There's uh, we're, We don't have headphones right now, so we're like monitoring while we're <laughs> it's the whole thing. All right, I'll keep the questions quiet so that they don't they don't feed <laughs> back. Whisper. But how how have things been? I know you just did kind of a, a fan meet and greet experience over the weekend. Yeah, that was cool. That, that was our first time doing one of those, and we surprisingly pulled it off very last minute, um, which was kind of an ambitious idea. Instead of just doing the show, we were like, let's try to do like a pop up, like because we've been talking about that because our VIPs like sell out so fast when we do tours. We're like, we should try to do like something that's similar to a vip so more people can come because they're kind of limited on tour because show days we don't really have time to do more than 70 to 100 um so yeah it went pretty well it's pretty cool yeah we're definitely interested in developing that more and uh seeing what we can do to you know engage more socially you know yeah like real life type stuff and we did like exclusive merch items we did a we did a vinyl variant actually where like it was the death of peace of mind but a different cover um which we got the idea from our friend Davis, who like is pretty big in the comic book whatnot space, and uh, yeah, it, it ended up being really cool. People were really excited about it, so I'm excited to see like how that develops moving forward. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely had huge FOMO watching the the lines, watching the crowds, and everything. <laughs> so so glad to hear it was super successful. Yeah, it was great, man. It was cool. Uh, and you brought up comics. I mean, that's loosely tied to the whole reason we're here today uh, to talk about anime so i guess to kick things off would love to hear a bit more about both of your experiences with anime you want to go first nick sure um yeah it started really young uh i, I want to say like toonami was like probably everybody's like biggest introduction to it dragon ball z uh yu yu Hakusho was one of my favorites but yeah i've been into it as long as i could remember that's why I got started drawing, just drawing bad versions of Goku and Vegeta and and yeah, running to find, you know, Ninja Scroll at Blockbuster. Yeah, it started really young. It's it's really cool how popular it is now and you can't go to the mall without seeing six stores that are all selling, you know, Sasuke stuff. Yeah, it's, it's interesting it's, how that works. Yeah, it, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I kind of like I started young, too, and then I, I fell out of it and got back into it, like with the culture, ironically enough, because when I was like, obviously, like I think Toonami, like you said, and stuff like that was my first introduction to anime. And I got like really into Naruto, which I think was my first time watching an anime that wasn't like on like TV or it was, but I like I think I got the box set. I can't remember, but I just remember like loving and being obsessed with naruto when i was like a little kid like i think i was maybe 11 or 12 when i got into it i can't remember it depends on when it came out i might be lying or looking like a liar uh, <laughs> i do remember once like going to get my hair cut and like showing them a picture of sasuke and i was like and they were like what the fuck uh, this is not gonna work player they're like this is a uh, this, this defies gravity uh <laughs> as you know it this is not gonna this is a 2d image someone drew this is not a real haircut uh but yeah so i kind of fell out of it when i got into music and stuff and like when i was a teenager and it was like getting not cool to like anime you know and like you know uh when we started touring again and or started touring for the first time with bad omens um our tour manager matt also loves anime and uh we kind of like bonded over that when we first started working together and it got me back into naruto because i never actually finished it so like uh yeah, around that time, I started getting back into anime, and um, I think during the pandemic, I finally finished Shippuden, because, like, when else would you have the time to watch right. all those episodes if you include filler, too? But, yeah, it's it's kind of been, like, in and out of my, my life growing up. That's awesome, and that also awakens a core memory of showing uh, the barber Gohan's hair and being like, make me this. <laughs> like, no. Which, which Gohan? Which um, era? Specifically, the filler episodes after they get out of the hyperbolic time chamber before the Cell games. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the best version of Gohan for sure. Yeah, when he's like chilling mm -hmm. real life, they're hanging out by the lake. Like, that's, 
I was like, oh, that could be real life because he's doing it in real life. <laughs> Dude, I actually still haven't watched Dragon Ball. That's Holy like that's, I know that's like that a cardinal. I know it's like it's a car- cardinal <laughs> sin in anime, but like like Naruto, I know it's like infinite and so as content, and I just haven't had the time. And our, again, Matt, he has like a whole leg sleeve of Dragon Ball Z stuff. Yeah, he's got a Shenron leg <laughs> sleeve, and I'm like, man, I I know it's good, and I want to watch it. I just haven't had time to start it, and I know like when I start it, I'm gonna probably like fixate. So I need like a good window of time to give it my attention because. I heard like Naruto, it takes like twenty episodes to finish one scene. Yeah, that that's definitely true. I mean, we're beeping this whole section out because you said you haven't watched Dragon Ball yet, but uh, <laughs> it's all cut. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's you will get lost in it, but there are some times where it does take a while to for each character to explain what they're about to do and explain why they're doing what they're doing. But it's all worth it. Yeah, it's got it's got nice. a lot of similar vibes. Nice. Um, and, <laughs> And Nick, you mentioned that you started drawing because of anime. Is that what led you down the path to become a tattoo artist as well? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I, you know, because like Bugs Bunny and all the, you know, American cartoons didn't do too much for me. I thought, you know, anime was like, why, why are we drawing goofy, goofy uh, bunnies and stuff when, you know, you could be doing crazy sword fights. Like that seems like the obvious one to gravitate towards to me. So, yeah. Yeah, and I mean it's it's a lot cooler. I agree. It's more fun to draw someone ripping someone's heads off or punching through someone's stomach. And I mean, from Naruto, there's plenty of moments that are worth recreating and drawing yourself. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are there is there anything that you're both watching more recently now that you're back in it? Now that you've got a little bit of time in between tours. Um, I think the last thing we watched together was i showed him paranoia agent we blasted through that all in like a night or two um and then you know on my own i I just watched all of the ranking of kings and that was so charming i thought that was so wholesome but there was still some shocking violence i i really enjoyed that yeah more recently um i i finally started and finished pretty quickly elf and lied i actually really enjoyed that um on the last, maybe it wasn't the last tour. Maybe it was Concrete One. I can't remember. It all like bleeds together. But uh, Matt and I started the Cyberpunk anime on Netflix, which I also I thought was really good. I was like, I had kind of like a low expectation going in on like a Netflix original anime. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, started Demon Slayer recently, but I didn't have time to finish it. Um, Chainsaw Man also really cool. Still haven't finished it. Oh, I need to do that too. <laughs> Yeah, it's like whenever I have the time to like sit and like catch up or watch anime or even like any TV, I'm just so I just like fall asleep. (laughs) But yeah, I'm stoked to finish all those. Uh, I'm guessing there's probably not much time on tour to catch up and watch or even read. That's actually the best time. That's that's when I was able to watch finished like Elf and Lied in like a week because I was just in my bunk every night after after we played and just yeah. blasting through episodes. I'm like sitting looking at my phone watching the episode <laughs> with my AirPod in. Um, but yeah, probably this tour I'll get to I'll get to finish Chainsaw Man or at least I mean catch up to where it's currently at. But anything you're trying to watch this tour? No, that sounds good. Chainsaw Man. I've heard, I've, I've seen one episode and it's so promising. I loved it, so I'm excited to get back into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that right. It hits the sweet spot of like super heavy and super goofy and super bloody. It kind of just like fits exactly with this genre of music. It's like yep. it, it's exactly what everyone wants out of something that they watch. It's like that's the feeling of being yeah. in the pit or hearing a breakdown. It's so extreme. I love it. It's so <laughs> exactly. insane. Uh, and I mean, you've, you've brought up Naruto as well. It does get pretty dark pretty heavy pretty violent do you find that like that your love of that show or love of other series I mean, you've also listed off some some kind of dark like futuristic fantasy types do you find that makes its way into your music whether consciously or subconsciously oh definitely um yeah i think both too like consciously and subconsciously we, we actually did this collab with this edm artist keizo and i i used uh this line the will of fire which is like a title of one of the like naruto side movies and um and also like our imagery too like just with our like dystopian dark like overtones and the aesthetic and like the color choices and everything like we worked with a photographer once that even like he was also a fan of anime and he would like do photo shoots where he'd try to like recreate his favorite like scenes or stills from episodes of an anime that he liked 
uh, with like, you know, real models and, you know, real life photography, obviously. And I thought that was like a really cool way to make artists like kind of basing it on like a, a really like, you know, powerful frame in an anime. That's just. Too yeah, easy. I think it's uh, you might know, too. Is it I think it's perfect blue when she's screaming in the bathtub. Uh, they use that shot in Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, anime can be super powerful and influence other media. I feel like we watched a movie recently where the director said he was pretty. Oh no! I think it was Stranger Things. I was when I was I watched Elf and Lied, and I was reading about it, and I, it reminded me of Stranger Things. And I went and looked, and the creators. Of oh Stranger yeah, there's Things. no way he could deny <laughs> all the similarities. Yeah, there. I was like, this is very similar, and I know this is way older than Stranger Things. So like, there and luck. Thankfully, he was like shameless about. It. He's like, absolutely, yeah, I, I loved Elf and Lied. So yeah, that's really cool how it, it makes its way into like other other forms of art, and you know, people that dive in deep enough get to find the root of that. You know. Yeah, because it's it's such a unique way to kind of express this emotion. It helps you kind of dial things up to eleven, yeah, for lack of a better term. And like you can you can show what you want to show because you're able to make it so extreme and loud. And I feel like that's also what ties uh, your type of music to that to anime as well. Is that you can make it so heavy and so big at the same time and really kind of express what you're trying to express. Is that do you, do you find that? is true for your music and do you think overall for the heavy music scene like that that extremeness is what kind of brings both genres together because you've mentioned overlap of audiences before so i'd very be very curious to hear your take yeah i would i would definitely say that's part of the allure to it you know you can get that's what, what we try to do is like make our our stuff so super cinematic and take it as big as it can go you know and that's you know something you can't necessarily do if you're doing little comics and stuff you know it, it's so much more powerful when there's motion to it and and all the extreme imagery yeah it's uh yeah like nick said i mean it, it, it makes it way more fun to be experimental you know with that type of stuff and, and even like you know with anime with, with the crossover with music like I don't really i can't think of any shows where the theme song is like can have a rock or like heavy metal thing the way like you know like demon slay and like death note and stuff like yeah you're never gonna turn on like gray's anatomy and hear like metal in the in the intro no <laughs> title yeah, card. no shot bad omens is doing the intro music for gray's anatomy. <laughs> um so that's like that's cool in itself that even like without you know you know metal asking the anime like brings that into its its universe as well and vice versa um and yeah, like we were talking about before the interview, like there's that crossover with with, with like video games and, and metal music and anime and, and MMA and stuff. And it's like a surprising, like it's like a sleeper cell of people that like love yeah. anime that no one you would never guess, you know? Yeah. I meet so many people on tour that I would never think like anime and then we like bond over it and stuff. And it's really cool. It feels like a little, it's kind of like metal in that in that sense that it's like a subculture that people can relate to. A hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and that's cool. Yeah, it's like you mentioned that the the culture is kind of coming back in like the sleeper hits. You could f see these people that are like really tatted up and love anime. Or you could see the people that have like glasses like mine and are button up shirt, but they play just like crushing math metal. So it's it's interesting that what, what could be lying below the surface or something like that. Yeah, and there's like with with it coming into the mainstream more often and like you know going to the mall and every front of every spencer's or hot topic is like an anime shirt like i see like the gatekeeping too from like the anime crowd and it reminds me so much of of like the gatekeeping and rock and metal where it's like people are i feel like i, I feel like i get it i sympathize with it because you have this thing that again is a subculture and like you can relate to that feels like you're kind of on the the fringes of mainstream culture and stuff um and then you feel like it's taken away from you and like it's it's in packs. You don't appreciate it the same way I do. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like this snowball, like this cycle of just like, I don't know, hypocriticalness, I guess you could say, where like you're doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a that, vicious cycle. Yeah. Like the same thing that was done to you for being like a weirdo that likes something different, you know, and like other people try to get into it. And it's, uh, I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's cool that it's in the main, the mainstream. And I feel that way about rock and metal too, and how like alternative music is getting way more popular on a mainstream level at this point like i think that's good for the genre it's good for us like 
metal musicians, it's no secret they like struggle to make money because it's such a small pocket of the music industry. And the same thing goes for anime. I feel like it should be a lucrative, you know, culture and business. Yeah, so they can keep coming out on the road. Exactly. And keep doing stuff. And then they can keep making cool content, more cool anime, cool shows, you know, like that's it's not free. <laughs> we did a lot of research because I've like wanted to do anime music videos before and they're like that work is more expensive than like real like music videos, like with actors and like, yeah. stuff like that. from what I've seen, like it costs so much more. And I think I read something that like almost over half animes that get made like never actually make the money back it costs to make them or something and it's just like the really big ones that pay for all of them i don't know how that works with like the infrastructure in, in japan and all that in the studios but more or less i read that it was like insanely expensive to to make that style of of uh like content yeah especially now with the digital and the physical where you have animators animating on screens but some are hand-drawn and that adds more yeah. cost and time to the process but it ends up being worth it um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a very interesting business, but it's, it's funny that you brought up music videos. Cause I, I'm also curious where, like, were you the type of kids that sat in front of YouTube and just watched AMVs with, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's funny you asked that because last, the show we just played in, in Jer- was it yesterday, day before yesterday? Yeah. Two days ago. The show we just played, we like, we made this, uh, short little clip for artificial, for our song, artificial suicide. Or like right when it drops, it's like this fight scene. Uh, what was the show? There's a I thought there was, was a, a show couple you shows. Was, there's yeah. you know some clips from My Hero, and uh, I think there's some clips from Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, it's very fast and cut up and like stuttered, and and Brian like put all these crazy like effects on it and stuff. But it just I thought it was cool because I've never seen a band do that before, and like you it kicks in and it's like they're like fighting on tempo to the song. So like now the video wall graphic has like anime fight scene <laughs> behind us while we're playing for like one verse of the song and yeah i thought that was that was a pretty fun thing to do it's cool i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that that sounds perfect like the perfect <laughs> timing and there's there's times where you hit those like those growls where it's like you're just shouting something that someone would say right before they punch someone in an yeah, yeah. <laughs> i need to start embodying that more yeah people uh i just like changed up my stage outfit for this tour and i got these like pants and this jacket that have like all these pockets and i saw like a few people on twitter be like like put it side by side with kakashi's yeah. outfit because it looks just like his like utility vest or whatever it is and i was like that's so sick I'm just, <laughs> that's so awesome hey, you need to get the head wrap now to cover one of your eyes <laughs> that might lead to you falling off stage oh, that would be sick <laughs> lose all depth perception fall off the riser yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it, uh, just to go back to a point you said too, I think it is kind of funny. I feel like you could look at R slash metalcore and R slash anime, and like the conversation flow would be the exact same. Just take out yep. yeah. a band and put in a title, and that's exactly what you get. Yeah, R slash uh, metalcore is one of my favorite things to make fun of because, <laughs> <laughs> because they like so many people on that Reddit group like want to talk about bad omens, and they always get in trouble. And I'm like. Surely, if if everyone's talking about it, it can count as metalcore. If everyone in this subreddit is talking about bad omens, or like if it like won some like voting thing or something, like I don't know. I I think I I like to think of like r slash metalcore, like or metalcore in general, as like a spectrum. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like always evolving, and the sound and the genre is evolving, and that's good for the genre. And then it kind of just goes like circles back to that gatekeepy thing where, you know people will get mad that like a band like us only has one or two songs on the record that could be technically considered metalcore and fall within the parameters of it has to have this amount of time of this type of thing and it's like it's so goofy like trying to trying to like tie it down like that <laughs> i've got their abacus out sliding back okay that was a breakdown one yeah. for this chart. <laughs> like how long was the breakdown uh what was it was it a real guitar like was it this but then that falsetto cancels that out <laughs> The falsetto to breakdown ratio <laughs> technically means this song can't be posted on r slash milk. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's it's funny though. Like I, I, I definitely notice and like I, I do find like humor in it that it's like people are like I can see people are like apprehensive to bring it up on that thread because the mods are like, we've already established like Bad Omens and Dayseeker, you can't talk about them. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hilarious. Uh and that 
the next question kind of ties into something you just said, actually, that metalcore is a spectrum. Is that another aspect of anime that kind of draws you to it as a medium because it doesn't have to be just the one thing that it looks like it is from the surface? Like even something like Jujutsu Kaisen, like you brought up, it's sure they're fighting, but there's a lot more going on. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. Even within like the frames of animation, there's these crazy fight scenes, super intense, like feudal Japan history stuff. And then, you know the next frame he's got the goofy face because he's like scarfing down ramen you know it can shift like so harsh tonally on the dime and and that's that's cool that they can cover such a wide spectrum of you know crazy intense emotions or just goofball stuff yeah and it, it always works it's crazy like even with naruto for example i know that's like a very popular obvious one but like it, like you get so goofy and then it gets so dark and you get attached to these characters and then like maybe you lose them and it's like you feel this like deep emotional connection sometimes more than like movies or like you know movies with real actors or content with like real actors you know and i don't know it's 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 crazy how like a uh, emotionally potent anime can be and uh i've had like people like joke on it and like call them cartoons <laughs> Just as like like Jolly calls them cartoons to like joke on us sometimes because we're like always talking about or watching anime, um, but he he likes anime too. But it's uh, it's kind of like a joke in our camp is just calling them cartoons now to like piss each other off. Like, oh, you watching cartoons? <laughs> yeah, Spirited Away can take you on a much greater journey than that's a great example. SpongeBob, too. you know? Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, it's... also SpongeBob never died, so. <laughs> SpongeBob didn't die. Not not invested. Yeah. Well, that's for <laughs> SpongeBob ship it in for when they come <laughs> SpongeBob. Oh, it Shippuden. was pretty emotional when him and Patrick almost dried up though. There was that scene, but oh, yeah. by and large, not, not so much. SpongeBob <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, like you, you do feel more sometimes when you see an anime character die because you just spent what 500 episodes with them like you better feel an emotional yeah, bond after that true. we went bond. to the dmv with goku and piccolo you <laughs> yeah. know that's just true <laughs> that is true and i'm like i'm like a, a like a hundred percenter type of person i probably shouldn't say that that sounds like a motorcycle gang that's a one percenter oh yeah no hundred percent <laughs> is great to be okay that. yeah i'm like a hundred percenter type of person with like with like anime like i'll watch all the filler episodes and uh so yeah i'm 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 fully in. I'm invested when I find a show that I like or an anime that I like or a manga that I like. I'm like, I have to see and read everything. Well, if you're watching Demon Slayer next, that's on your list. I kind of feel like that'll be right up above your alleys because it does have that like heavy, amazing animation juxtaposed with goofy facial expressions. And then there's just so much going on that it's one that I could see you both <laughs> losing yourself in. Yeah. Um, and kind of on that note, it's not necessarily a what's your favorite question because that's more open-ended, but is there a title for each of you or a show or a series that you've watched that really just sticks with you and kind of like helped you get a better sense of who you are as a person almost because it's easy to find meaning in anime, but is there one that's more personal for either of you? Um, I'm going to go Paranoia Agent. I thought, you know, the stuff that Satoshi was touching on was so crazy uh, relatable because, like, you know, she's overcome with all this stress of, like, living up to past success with the creation of Maromi that she, I don't want to spoil a thing, but, like, you know, just stress uh, and how important that is to manage that properly uh, was hit so crazy hard for me that I thought that was, like, really cool. Yeah, that's a that's such a better answer than I could give. Yeah, good luck, bud. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I definitely feel like Naruto shaped like a huge part of like my childhood when it came to like I don't know. He's he's just such as like a beam of like like moral standard, you know, where he's like always trying to do the right thing. And um, Aaron Yeager, I think too, with Attack on Titan, like I I thought his entire arc was so like. I don't know. It's weird to say relatable because it's so, <laughs> it's like so beyond reality, obviously. But just the concept of like how he got from where he was to to where he, where he is in the present day and stuff, and like I don't know. I guess the dichotomy of like that power mixed with like him originating, trying to do the right thing. Like I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 
Well, I think you're on a list somewhere now for saying that you relate to Aaron Yeager, but <laughs> I think it was still a good answer. Light Yagami is my <laughs> favorite. Light Yagami, yeah. He was right the whole time. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, but it's like, it's that, uh, it's like that transcendence of character, you know, that like, I think is so much more, I don't know, it feels almost more realistic than stuff you would see in like a Marvel movie where it's just such a predictable character. Arc. Right. There's a lot more dynamic, a lot more gray tones to it. Yeah. And, and again, with like, with, with like Yagami, like that's a perfect example of like your protagonist kind of turning into the antagonist, you know, and yeah. you end up like your favorite character turns into L. Yeah. He starts <laughs> with the greatest of intentions and then you just see him. Yeah. Warp. Yeah. And that's, I don't know. I think that's interesting. It's like a lesson in life. You could probably keep an eye on, you know, moderate. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's a cautionary tale. Yeah, exactly. Cautionary tale. I like those. Yeah. Well, and there's so many series where you're watching this person that you're supposed to be following. Like, do I even like this guy? Like, is this? Yeah. That's a lot more interesting than, oh, Peter Griffin fell down again and he's doing the. <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite show. Not just an anime, but like like Breaking Bad, like House of Cards, like all yeah, those ambiguous, uh, shows. ambiguous stuff. Yeah. And more, I feel like Western media, like we called out earlier, is getting influenced by that approach in anime. I mean, there's, there's Creed 3 where they, well, this is not as like philosophical, but they, they choreograph the fight scenes. To oh, right. Like yeah, I, I saw a clip about that. That Yeah, that looked Dude, really I, faithful, I'm too. I'm so bummed I still haven't seen Creed 3. I love the first two, and I want to see the third one so bad. I'm having that time. I saw Guardians that night. That was sweet. I really liked it. That was sweet. That was like the first good Marvel movie I've seen in years. They've been dropping the ball. But now they're dropping F bombs. <laughs> That's what did it. They need to take some notes from anime too while they're at it. Um, and you've got uh, two, is it two back to back tours coming up? Is they like you're about to leave for one and then there's one later on in the fall? Yes. <laughs> Pretty uh, much. <laughs> yeah. This the the rest of May into June a little bit, I think, and then uh, another headliner in the fall. Yeah, this this after this run we're doing this month. It's our biggest break we've had in like a year and a half, I think, where we have all summer off. We have June, July, and August off. And it's like, that's been the finish line for the last six months is like, get to the end of May, just get to June. And then we have three months to like finally relax. Cause even like this month, we just had off after the Europe headliner. We did Europe, Australia, and then we had like three and a half weeks off. And that wasn't enough time to like get acclimated to going home because we had to like prep stuff for this tour this month. And I like, we were playing the same set for two tours in a row for the concrete jungle headliners. So I really wanted to switch it up. So I spent all month, like making new intros and new video content with Brian for the, for the visuals and just working, you know, and trying to make this tour cool as well. So with the three months off, that kind of gives, gives us time to have like a month and a half to two months to actually get to relax. And then like a month to prep for the tour. Cause it usually takes us, two to three weeks to prepare for a tour you know yep and plenty of time to go back through your watch list if the for the stuff that you exactly. can't get on the bus exactly <laughs> <laughs> gotta get a vpn <laughs> <laughs> exactly um and i mean it's been amazing to see y'all's growth i mean you're the show the tour that you went on with under oath and spirit box that was my first show after lockdown and it just blew me away and then to see where you are now like i'm just so happy for y'all as a band thank and you just to see the success that's come about and to see like you have a following almost as avid as people who vote down any other show that's trying to take fma brotherhood as number one on mal like it's <laughs> you, you kind of have fans that are as avid as anime fans so just congratulations to you and the in the band Thank you. Was the Under Earth tour the first time you saw us? Was that the first time you heard of us? Yes, that was the first live show that I had seen. I'd listened before, but I finally got to see you live on that nice. tour. Yeah, that was that felt like the tour that really set things off for us because our album was coming out on that tour and we were yeah, playing 100%. a lot of new songs. And, yeah. Yeah, and, to, and then to see you come back through town and headline the same venue in the same year, I was like, that that is awesome. That was cool. I, I, that, was, that was like the coolest kind of like reflection moment of of last year was like visiting a lot of venues as a headliner sold out that we had just supported in all year. Um, that, that was like a cool, okay, I think we're doing this right moment. Yeah. You did the, the training arc beforehand <laughs> the yeah. support and then exactly. final fight going on as the headliner. Exactly. 
Um, and, and totally not related to the topic that we were just talking about, but um, I, I think you both have Naruto tattoos. Uh, or do you have any other anime tattoos? Um, I gave him his Leaf Village tattoo. Yeah. Nick did this one on my, my knuckle here. That's awesome. And then this this artist, Cody Ellis, who exclusively does like black traditional anime only tattoos. Yeah. He did this like crazy Itachi on my thigh. It's like one of my favorite tattoos of all wow. time, That's but sick. it's it's massive. We did it in a hotel in Indiana. It like took eight hours. It was crazy, and I'm just wearing these like Naruto socks right now. <laughs> it's the biggest Naruto nerd. Do you try to keep like spots on your skin open just in case there's a series that you like? <laughs> <laughs> well, after this big Itachi Itachi piece, because I love his style so much too. Like a lot of my tattoos, if I could go back, I would do black traditional because I just. It's like the boldest, longest lasting, like easiest to see from a distance style. Um, I kind of want to save the back of this leg for like a different anime piece. I'm not sure what yet. Like everything he does is so sick though that it was like, it was hard to pick on the spot because he, he hit us up. He's like, you're in Indiana. Like do you have time to get tattooed? No, we had an off day. I was like, actually I do. Come to this hotel and tattoo me for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah. And Nick, do you have any? You know, I was thinking, I don't know if I have any anime tattoos. I have a bunch of other goofball stuff, but surprisingly, not that. That is, yeah, that's right. I also don't have any, like, music tattoos. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, like, keeping everything separate. I forget, too. Like, I kind of have a lot at this point, so I I forget if I have something I maybe don't do or don't. I don't know. <laughs> So there's there's no plans. Oh, well, maybe you'll save some spot for Demon Slayer. Like, cause I feel well, like that one's gonna be one that you'll really like. Oh uh, yeah, I'm excited to get to get into that one. But on, I just remembered on my in ear monitors the things that, think dunk dunk dunk. I, I do have Maromi and Ryuk on the other side, so they're there. Just I not wish we had those you in my them. skin. Yeah, I would love to show you guys yeah. those. I'll post them later. They're hard to see. And we'll email y'all a picture for the article or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. It explains a lot that you've got that in your ear, kind of telling oh, you yeah. what's going on during the show. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pivot over to a few kind of more quick fire, or they don't have to be quick. You can just kind of give as a detailed or as short of an answer as you'd prefer, but they'll be for both of you. Um, starting with if you had to recommend three anime shows to someone who's never seen anime before, which three would you pick and why? That's never seen anime before. I think I would put Cyberpunk Edge Runners on there because that feels like a good entry, like entry level anime. Um, for someone to like get more familiar with it, that feels I don't know, I guess more like commercial, I could say. Like without just saying the obvious one, which is Naruto, because that would that would actually turn someone off. I think that's never seen it because it's so long. It's yeah, like, that in One Piece just daunting. Yeah, and like if you do it chronologically, like Shonen Jump is like pretty kid. I don't know. It feels like a kind of a kid show more than Shippuden does, even though there are like those dark moments. Yeah, probably like Edge Runners, Death Note. That's like that feels like a like a more popular one. That's pretty obvious that people. I feel like even people that don't like anime like like Death Note mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, what will be a third one? Let me think while you say your first one. <laughs> okay. You haven't well, even said one. Well, I'll go Spirited Away. I feel like oh, that grabs everybody's attention. That's yeah, like my third one. the highest rated IMDb animated thing in the world, I think. Yeah. Um, let me go SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I was going to say that too. No, fuck. I had a good one. Uh, okay, Mob Psycho. I, th I think that one is hilarious, and that can grab everybody's attention really easily. And um, I think I was gonna say Death Note, but you got that. Yeah, I think I think Attack on Titan is another obvious one. That's also easy to get into without oh, like yeah. feeling like you have eight hundred episodes to watch. You know, okay. there's so many anime that like again, like you it they draw out one scene over like 10 episodes so it's 
that's not a good entry level. It's like someone's like first video game being like a Dark Souls game. Like, I would never play video games again. <laughs> yeah, it's a steep curve. Okay, I'll go Dragon Ball Z because that's what I started with. So that's like teaches you. Yeah. How old is this hypothetical all the, person? All the archetypes of uh, you know, how you get through an arc. Yeah. Damn, I haven't even seen like half the ones you've listed off. I gotta, I gotta catch up. Oh man, I'm about to get gate kept after this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only know like the big ones and then some niche ones. And we're beeping out everything that you've said so far. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we can use like four minutes of this. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Attack on Titan, I think that's that was how I got back into it. I kind of had a similar experience where I was into it and then fell off a little bit. And then Attack on Titan came back. And slight spoiler, Aaron's mom dies like 10 minutes in. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think that's one that people are just like, what is this? I have to see more of this. I, you know, I think I like Attack on Titan. I would probably put that back at like number one to recommend because it's like it feels like it's strictly dark. That like doesn't have any of those like goofy, silly, like dichotomy of like the face changes type of animation. Like that one is just only dark, and I think that's what I liked about it so much was it was just nonstop soul crushing tragedy. <laughs> yeah, agreed. That's what that's what keeps it going. That's probably why they need breaks in between all the seasons. Is just give everybody yeah. a chance to breathe <laughs> yeah i'm also like surprisingly not fully caught up i started getting caught up on the latest season and then like yeah, we just got really super busy i think that they started airing it at least on hulu like when we started getting back into touring after the pandemic or something i can't remember when it started happening but i remember getting really busy so yeah if i said i connect to aaron yeager and there's something i'm missing <laughs> Maybe I should add some context that I'm not caught up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an alibi. <laughs> yeah, my alibi is I'm not caught up. So if he does some insane shit, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we'll check back in with you after you get fully caught up and see. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I'd like to issue an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard he does some crazy shit. So I, yeah, I need to catch up before I say I, I'm Aaron Yeager. <laughs> Yeah, he, he does, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that to avoid spoilers because that's, that's like it's hard to go even on Google and not get yeah. spoiled because you just type in anything related to Attack on Titan and something pops up like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, you mentioned niche shows. Or what would be three shows that you'd recommend to other people who are diehard anime fans? Oh, man. If they're diehard, I, I don't think I could... I could match that and and tell them something they're not really aware of. Yeah. Uh, you already said paranoid agent, right? Oh yeah. Not for I'm, this question though. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they would be aware of that, but I would still say check that out. And they'd be like, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like maybe just because it's like the oldest or one of the oldest, but I feel like Elf and Lied would be one I would I would probably try to float, and then again they'd be like. <laughs> Fool. Yeah, you fool. This is the cred question. This is him testing. Yeah, us. this is this is us getting fucking <laughs> clowned on by Crunchy got a notepad Rolls. off camera. Right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Paranoid agent, Elf and Lied. There was a. Oh, you know what I did enjoy? I, I again, I didn't get to finish it, but Darwin's Game. Yeah, oh, I, I like that one a lot. I don't know if that one is niche or not. I have like no, like, like a uh, scale of like what. You know what I mean? Because I'm not that intertwined in that like culture. Like I just like anime, you know. So I don't know. I could be naming things that they're like, dude. Everyone's seen that, you idiot. <laughs> no, Darwin's game is a good answer. That's one that we always talk about in the office. Like, when's that coming back? That was that was fun. That was enjoyable. Yeah, it, I I don't know. I need to finish it, but I remember really enjoying the first few episodes. There's a cult one, like a huge cult classic that I still haven't seen that I want to check out. I, I haven't found the right avenue to watch it. And maybe Crunchyroll has it. Uh, Angel's Egg. Because uh, that was like a big influence for Dark Souls imagery as well. So as well as Berserk. But that's like the classic. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that one. So I, I do want to check out Angel's Egg. Yeah. Interesting. I actually don't know if we have that one on the platform or not, but that, that's something for me to check. <laughs> yeah, I would love. I'd love to hear back on that. All right, I will follow up with you when I'm following up about the Aaron Yeager <laughs> update. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna end this interview and go start watching right now. I'll be like, what have I done? <laughs> um, all right, top three favorite openings or endings. 
Oh man, the second half of Death Note, Maximum the Hormone. What's up, people? That is the most jarring. Talk about theme songs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul, a first first season. That one is insane. Um. I think it's just called fighting it's one of the naruto ones like we are fighting heroes i like a whole playlist of all the naruto themes because they're so catchy i love that one yeah what's the name of the asian kung fu generation one dude i don't know haruna (laughs) katana i think oh yeah something along those lines yeah that's oh you know what's got to be in there the pillows flcl that whole soundtrack is just so the dumb, titles dude. are insane to remember, so I'm never gonna tell you the right title. But yeah, I would I would say the Tokyo Ghoul, the fight we are fighting hero song, <laughs> and uh, uh, the Demon Slayer uh, theme song from the first season. Oh, I'm not familiar. It's I'm, cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna go all of FLCL, all yeah. the pillows tracks. Yeah, that works. Right, right on shooting star. Yeah, even Crazy without, sunshine. Even without finishing it, I love that theme song in Demon Slayer. That one's sick. That one's so good for karaoke too. I, I don't know if you do that often, but that's one where you you just are belting your heart out, and then you can't talk for the entire next day. <laughs> that's that's what I need to do on tour. Yeah, <laughs> lose my voice yeah, doing boy, karaoke, you know. <laughs> doing, doing anime theme song karaoke. I think people would understand. Yeah, they would. They would. Um, and then top three favorite characters. Mm. Yusuke Urameshi. <clears throat> L Ryuk. for sure. L for sure. Oh, you're going there. to L. I, I, I'll, I'll just go Ryuk. L for sure. Um, let me think. Itachi. That's like, I got to say that. I have him tattooed on like, on like 20% of my body. Um, L, Itachi. Who else? You know, my, my, my like haircut, my big like transition from long to short hair was inspired by Levi. So gotta go with levi oh yeah captain levi that makes so much sense now that you say that (laughs) (laughs) he's a he's a bad he's a bad motherfucker i love captain levi what do you got nick i don't know i'm gonna leave it open open open-ended i gotta think about it patrick star yeah (laughs) plankton But Plankton, do we support Plankton? Do we relate to him? What is it? Oh, Plankton yeah. sympathizer. Oh yeah, we're 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 going to the chum bucket, brother. <laughs> oh, who's the what's the name of the little a little pink character in Paranoia? Oh, Maromi. Yeah, that's probably that's probably up there for me. If that if there was a fourth option. Oh yeah, so adorable, so so sinister, <laughs> so adorable and sinister. Yeah. Oh yeah, little slugger. We'll go little slugger. Little slugger. Yeah. All right. With the golden skates. That's a neurotic choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much. Everything is starting to make sense now. About <laughs> the music, about the guys. It's just it's all lining up. Yeah. Um, and then I guess uh, last, it's not a quick hit, but uh, when can we expect the Bad Omens anime album? When is that coming? Oh, boy. Man, I wish I knew. Um. This might be a great place to like premiere this information. I think I've mentioned it in a VIP before, but those are like no phones. So we are working on and have almost finished the uh, first couple of volumes of a of a comic, of oh, a wow. Concrete Jungle comic. Yeah. And we're just kind of more in the process of uh, figuring out like the rollout and the marketing and how we want to do that. Um but yeah, it's very cool. Like the, the art is very cool. The story is is actually good. Um, and again, Davis, our good buddy who who designs all the merch with us, and is more or less like the creative director. I think at this point of like our merch store, um, he's being like heavily involved because he's so much more knowledgeable about that like industry of comic and graphic novel stuff. Um, so yeah, very excited about that to get that rolled out i don't know when that's happening but i know it exists <laughs> it's like not something we're just talking about but it's like actually happening so that's really cool that is awesome i cannot wait to see that is it going to read uh, right to left like manga or are you going to keep it more <laughs> no i don't think <laughs> i don't think so yeah that would be cool but uh no i don't from the first volume it's not that could be cool if like a uh like a variant like 
for like a spin-off type of thing, like yeah. a side side volume doing like a manga do more than a regional comic. ones and you know yeah japan gets the uh <laughs> manga version yeah any top bidders want to hear this interview want to go in on it let us know <laughs> cutting that part out i'm gonna be the one with bidding on that <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get into the ground floor yeah you could do it like a ranking of kings did it where they have the the side stories going this season and that, that's what yeah. you can do with the yeah i don't know i'm i really like i know other bands have done graphic novels um but like having, having the, uh, I guess the asset of like someone like Davis it, it, on our team, I feel like we have the potential to take it somewhere like much more long term and like not just be like a one off novelty kind of item, like like a band would have that everyone kind of just forgets about. Like I think there could be like something cool that comes from it, you know, like as like a long term part of this band and like the band's lore and the Concrete Jungle lore. If like it, if it does well and it's successful and we can keep making them be cool it would definitely help in the times between albums to have bad omens volumes dropping week to week yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, um, and uh, just any final thoughts for uh the Crunchyroll fans Crunchyroll audience no I, i'm just i'm just thanks for having us uh, really, yeah this has been a lot of fun honestly <laughs> this is a cool interview to do we, like we've, we've always been like man what if we did like cooler stuff and not just like music <laughs> magazines that like everyone's like asks the same questions like when did the band start yeah how'd you guys meet like this is actually like super fun and cool so uh yeah thanks for having us and considering us of course it was an honor to talk to you you did just remind me of a question that i meant to ask so when did sure. the band start <laughs> <laughs> all right <leave> the studio. <laughs> all right but thank you guys again for taking the time i'm looking forward to to seeing you on tour later this year um and seeing what else you come out with uh, related to music, related to, to comics, just related to everything. It's been so fun watching y'all grow and can't wait to see what's next for y'all. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. That was great to meet you. All right, I will turn off the recording now.